Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. Would you please turn your Bibles to Daniel chapter 5, verses 5 through 7 for our scripture reading today. It's Daniel 5, verses 5 through 7. In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand. He wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Then the king's countenance was changed, and his thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his loins were loosed, and his knees smote one against another. The king cried out loud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. And the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about his neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. What a beautiful stage we have today in church. It's beautiful. It's special. I feel better. I don't know. I'm the same person, but... Every year during this time of the, the year, we have wonderful decorations. Uh, last time we had the Jesus, uh, baby Jesus on, on this side. Right now it's there. It's beautiful. And uh, I'm super happy when I come to church. I don't know about you, but I, when, I, when I come here, when I see the stage, when I see... Uh, our members being involved in ministries in downstairs with children, upstairs with Sabbath school, greet, greeters that greet everyone uh, that come here, Pathfinders leaders, deaconesses, deacons. Uh, they are the greatest Christmas ornament for, for, for our church here. And uh, through your presence, through your presence, uh, everything is nice here, but from this perspective, it's everything is nice there because uh, you are here I mean, we are so grateful to welcome all of you this sabbath to be part of the service here and if i am happy and i have that kind of sp spiritual joy in my life imagine how god looks down on us today looks upon our church today and says you know i am super happy i see i see all of them in church and i see not just them being physically present there but they are sincere, they are interested, and they love me. And guess what? Special angels are sent with special blessings for us today. And this is not just for Christmas season. This is for the Sabbath season. And today is Sabbath, and we welcome all of you. Now, we have another chapter in our Daniel series. We have. And uh, next uh, Sabbath, I'll invite you for another step uh, forward in this series, and we'll talk about lions in Daniel's dens. Yeah, I didn't make any mistake. I know what I'm saying. But I want to tell you, during that night, it was more difficult for the lions because they were super hungry. They had fresh food, the best food in the whole empire because Daniel was healthy. Healthy lifestyle, healthy body, healthy spirit. And the uh, lions, they said, we never had food like this before. But the whole night, they had to stay there with the food. And they were, it was harder for them, more difficult for them than for Daniel during that night. I invite you for that sermon next uh, Sabbath. Until then, open your scriptures in Daniel chapter 5. Uh, there is a new king we have, Belshazzar. And he has just one chapter in the scripture. Just one chapter, and this is the chapter. And uh, this chapter is not a positive chapter about his life or about his destiny. And I don't like a life like that. When the Bible presents something about me and is a negative thing, I don't like that. No chance to change my destiny, no chance to, do, to have a, a new beginning, nothing. Friends, uh, I invite you to open the scripture and read with me, actually to follow me, from verse 1. Belshazzar the king made a great feast for a thousand of his lords and drank wine in the presence of the thousand. While he tasted the wine, Belshazzar came, 
gave the command to bring the gold and silver, silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple, which had been in Jerusalem, that the king and the, his lords, his wives, and his concubines might drink from them. Then they brought the gold vessels that have been taken from the temple of the house of the Lord, which had been in the Jerusalem, and the king and his lords, his wives, and his concubines drank from them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and silver, bronze and iron, wood and stone. This is what it is said about this king. Nothing else. He's the Nebuchadnezzar's uh, grandson. The Bible several times mentions about his father or his son. It's a gener generic term, being ancestor. But his historians say he was the grandson of the great Nebuchadnezzar uh, the king. If you want more details about the specific prophetic uh, details in the book of Daniel, please attend the meeting uh, at 5 o'clock and Frank Molina leads that seminar on Daniel where they talk about details, every detail. But in my sermons I cover just the narrative part with no many details in terms of prophecy, history, because I don't want to compete with that class. Now, um, what's number th one thing it's mentioned about this king? Nothing about his strategies, nothing about his politics, nothing about his character, nothing about the way he treated people around him. Just one story, friend, and this is the last story of his life. And this is the last day of his life according to the biblical record. I don't know about you, but I would like to live my last day among, with my family, doing positive things, having the positive thoughts and attitudes in, in my life, and I want to be found ready for the eternal life. But sometimes, uh, during our lifetime experience, an accident can happen, and I can drive my car, that can be my last day. Uh, a terrible disease can come overnight, and I can have a heart attack, that can be the last night. We are not in control with our lives on this earth. That's why, friends, we don't know when the last day will be for us. That means from the biblical perspective, as I know, God said, live every day like being the last day. That means with no regrets, no issues that can bother your conscience, because last day can be when you least expect that day to happen. Now, going back to this uh, this. Uh, uh, king, we see him being the uh, party organizer, being the one that likes to party. I know his grandfather worked hard to develop that empire, to bring a lot of uh, things from all over the globe, to bring wise people from every nation. But this king is here to inherit the empire, but not to work for the wellness of the empire. And he wants to party. And we have thousands of people that are invited. And when they say concubines, we may, can mention even more than concubines there. And I don't want to mention in church about their uh, lifestyle and the way they have parties. And during that party, he came with the idea, I'm not satisfied. Everything is fine. I am, I, my clothes are the best clothes. The food is the best food in the world. The company is the one that no one enjoyed so far. But I'm not satisfied. I still miss something. What is that something that you miss, uh, uh, a Lord? And they said, you know, I'm not satisfied until I drink the wine from those holy vessels that were brought uh, years ago from Jerusalem. And I ask, if the king will be here, I will ask, does that wine taste better? If you drink it from those vessels, don't you remember those vessels were dedicated to the Lord, never intended to be used for common people, for common purposes? Why do you want to drink your wine on this day from the holy vessels? Friends, the king will not say much, but I will understand there is a human tendency when we are involved in something wrong, and we go to a, a level of depravity uh, and sinfulness in our lives, it's not just my relationship with that particular sin. 
It's something that I want to do against the one that doesn't like me to be a sinner. I want to offend that person that much. You know, um, there are different kind of um, levels of sinners. When we sin for the first time, we try to hide our sin, we try to enjoy the sin, but we don't want to hurt anyone around us. We don't want to let them know that we sin, and uh, it's just us. But there is a, another level of uh, being a sinner when you consciously know that when you sin, it's just not against you, against your health, against your family relationship, but you hurt everyone that you love the most. In what the king says here, I want to drink, and I want to have this kind of party against as a rebellion to the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And that was the ultimate sin in his life. Friends, if sometimes your conscience, and I hope that your conscience tells you all the times, but if sometimes the conscience says, don't do it because someone suffers, your beloved one suffers, don't do it because it's against your faith, don't do it because it's against God that protected you, uh, uh, offered uh, you his providence, friends, it's better to stop at that moment. Because the history of this king mentions that can be the last day for you. They can be the, the, the place where they, can, they cannot exist a turning point. You go and cross the limit, you cannot be saved. Not because God doesn't want you to be saved, but you break a mechanism in your mind, in your conscience, and it's difficult for you to realize your spiritual condition, and it's difficult for you to even manifest a desire to come back. Okay? Now, this, uh, and also, they wanted to, to drink their wine from the holy vessels, and every time when we do something on purpose, it's the same th thing. We drink our wines from the holy vessels, okay? And remember the Bible says about our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now, I don't want to give you the whole list of things that are not supposed to get into this body because I am guilty of some. And when I have my list, I look at your list. Oh, your list is even huge. You have a lot of gods out there. And I feel a little holier than than uh, you but uh, uh, friends if God said something also if your parents say something if your pastor say something and your doctor say something you better you better listen because there there will be a day when the doctor will say it's too late you drank the wine from the holy vessel and now you suffer the consequences of your own decisions. Now, I heard a lot of vegetarians, vegans, people who drink just water, dying early, having heart attacks. And I always am shocked when I hear about a skinny person who has cholesterol. I said, if that person lost a lot of donuts in her life, on his life, and still has cholesterol, what about me? There is no fairness in this world. You know, friends, health, it's a complex thing. It's in our, in our being born, being born in this society, in this world, we are already on the path to death, sooner or later. But the Bible said, don't push that process uh, uh, faster than normally it is. Now, let's go back. In verse 4, they said, they drank wine, and praise the God of gold and silver, bronze, iron, wood, and stone. What? Not just they drank from the holy vessels, but they praised the God of, you know, you see the sequence here? Gold, silver, bronze, iron, wood, and stone. They, we don't have clay, but they put, stone, uh, they put wood there. Exactly the, the uh, symbols of the statue, the medals from the statue. God told Nebuchadnezzar, Worship me. I am in charge with your kingdom, with your life, with your destiny. And finally, Nebuchadnezzar, last time we discussed about it, got the lesson and praised God. And I hope he's saved because 
at the end of that chapter, chapter 4, he finished well. And I hope that was the last day of his life. But now comes a new generation of, uh, of uh, uh, people. They knew about what happened in the past, but they don't lear learn anything from that. And they have tools, uh, uh, experience things in their lives on, our, on their own. And now we see the, this king praising gods of gold and silver, bronze and iron, wood and stone. You know, in America we have houses mostly made by wood. You know, you may worship this kind of woods, wood uh, gods. Look at my house. We may have cars. I don't see, no, I don't have cars with silver, and, but maybe there is some brass cars there or some kind of iron cars there. I may praise that god of, I may praise things. And uh, any time I rely on what I have, you know, what I accomplished, and I forget about God, I am like this king. Okay? Now, while he, they did that, verse 5, it is said, In the same hour, the fingers of a man's hand appeared and wrote opposite the lampstand on the plaster of the wall of the king's palace, and the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Verse 6, I underline this verse in my Bible, verse 6. The king countenance change and his thoughts trouble him so that the joints of his hips were loosened and his knees knocked against each other. Okay? It, this is a huge difference between a very confident person drinking from the holy vessels from the Jerusalem, praising uh, his accomplishments. And friends, they weren't his accomplishments. They were his father's accomplishments. But he praised the same gods. And now, after the writing on the wall, we see a different attitude. We see a real person that doesn't have control on his body parts. Did you ever lost that control of body parts? When someone asked you something and your cheek became red? <laughs> Where your throat couldn't provide a sound? When you didn't have enough energy to say something? Were you you were starting to shake, okay? That's the time when you say, what happened to me? I thought I was, I, was, I was strong. I thought I am powerful. I, you know, there are times in our lives when we lose control of what's going on in our lives. Now the king said, uh, invite the astrologers, Chaldeans. I don't know. I'm tired of inviting these astrologers and Chaldeans. I'm tired. This is the third time in the book you know, when they ask all of them that are with the, on their payroll, come and you heard the story, your father asked them, you know, make some cuts in their salaries because they are there for nothing. Friends, we talk about him, but that's us. When instead of doing the right things when we are in the crisis, we always do the same things they don't work. They don't provide peace. They don't provide security. We always, because why? I'm afraid to go directly to God. Because I know for sure what God tells me to do. And I don't want to leave my lifestyle back. I don't want to renounce that. I, know, I don't want to give up. I try to fix my life with the ways I tried always and I saw never worked. The Chaldeans, astrologers, never helped anyone. It's not about you. I never heard any story about you. But there are people, they go to the physical astrologer. So they say, tell me the future. I want to get married. Do I keep this job? Do I need this? And they go there in, in check. That doesn't work. Coming to God, it's risky. But anyway, uh, there is a whole story there. They came, they didn't say anything. He offered the, the third place in the kingdom for the one that writes the... Uh, reads the writing on the wall. Imagine he was so desperate, you know. But on the last day of your life, you can offer everything. If you, you can offer every, even the first day, uh, uh, place in the kingdom is the last day. That doesn't matter that much. Now verse 10. The queen, because of the words of the king and his lords, came to the banquet hall. The queen spoke, saying, O king, live forever. Do not let your thoughts trouble you, not let your countenance change. 
There is a man in your kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy God. I love this part of the passage. Uh, first, the queen wasn't there at the party. The mother queen wasn't there at the party. She wasn't invited. I, have, I see a lesson here. If you have a party and your mother cannot be there or she is not, she is not comfortable to be there, that means the party is not a good party. If you watch a show that when your mother comes into your room, you are not comfortable with the mother's presence, maybe change the show. Because the mother, his mother, the queen mother wasn't there. And also, who else wasn't there? Who else wasn't there? Daniel. By this time, he wasn't supposed to be there. He's around 80 years old. And you don't invite an older person to the party when they have this kind of stuff. And Daniel wasn't invited. By the time, he didn't have an official. He was semi-retired. He wasn't an official position because they offered him the third place in the kingdom. And uh, the most important thing in this, in this uh, short passage is in verse 11. And I want this passage and I want this verse to be applicable to all of us today in our uh, present circumstances, at work, at home, at church. There is a man in your kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy God. Friend, I don't know. We may go for all achievements in the world. We may try to attract people who, who uh, value us, to say words about us. He's a nice person. He is friendly. Uh, he works hard or whatever. Uh, um, but the most important thing, a desirable thing we may have about us, people saying, and especially the Lord, is this. It's a man or a woman in your kingdom at your work, at work, at home, at church that has the spirit of the Holy God. I wish and I pray this verse can be applied to my life. And I wish I pray this verse can be applied to your life. And I want your co-workers to say about you, I don't know much about this person, but he had that kind of special attitude. Maybe they don't say the word Holy Spirit because they are not used with this terminology, but they may say something about you, and your influence there can help people even in, in their uh, crisis, uh, in moments of uh, problems. Now, they ask him in the... In verse 13, Daniel was brought in before the king. The king spoke and said to Daniel, Are you that Daniel who is one of the captives from Judah, whom my father, the king, brought from Judah? Have heard of you that the Spirit of God is in you and that the light of understanding and excellent wisdom are found in you? Now, he said, I found, I called for these people. They didn't say anything. Now it's your turn. I'll give you this and this and this and this. Um, without... Uh, presenting all the details, he's 80 years old. He was brought into that country when he was 16. And this king still has, says for him, are you the one of the captives from Judah? <laughs> you know, he didn't say, are you the former prime minister my father had? Are you the one that uh, helped my father with this? Uh, no, for him he was the captive, former captive, the former slave. Are you the slave one? You know, sometimes, friends, we have the same attitude. Someone makes some mistakes when he was young, teenager. Uh, and they are repented. They came back to church. They demonstrate they changed their lives. And we look back to that event. Are you the one who drove the car? Are you the one who made that comment? Are you the one after 70 years, friends? Let's stop, you know, with that kind of attitude. But we'll not talk about this today. Now, verse... Verse 22, because we cannot afford to read everything. But you, his son, he mentioned about the story of Nebuchadnezzar. You, his son, Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart, although you knew all these things. And you have lifted yourself up against the Lord of heaven, and have brought the vessels of his house before you, and your lords, your wives, and your concubines, have drunk wine from them. And you have praised the gods of silver and gold, bronze and iron, 
wood and stone, which do not see or hear or hear or know. And the Lord who held your breath in his hand and owns all your ways, you have not glorified. Then the fingers of the hand were set, sent from him, and this writing was written. And this is the inscription that was written. Many, many tekel were for sin. This is the interpretation of each word. Many, God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. Tekel, you have been weighed in the balance and found wanting. Perez, your kingdom has been divided and given to the Medes and Persians. You know, this is the terrible news. Terrible news for the kingdom, for the, for the king. But the most important thing was Daniel had the courage to explain him why this happened to him. Because you didn't learn from the history. You saw your grandfather suffering, having those experiences. You didn't learn anything from that. You did exactly what he did. He glorified himself. He put himself above the God, or about God that uh, provides everything. And, uh, and also, he didn't uh, glorify um, the God of the universe. And that's why this um, message. Friends, I don't know in what world do you live. I'm not sure. But I live in the real world. Why I say this? I don't watch TV except if something terrible happens. But I read the news on the internet. And lately, I see a lot of writing on the wall. I don't, I don't know these people on TV. I don't know these politicians. I don't want to know them. I don't want to spend my time listening to their morning shows, telling uh, bad things about others or criticizing others about the same things they do or they did in the past. Or I don't know about politicians on both sides saying, you know, we're valuable Christians, valuable citizens, look at the other side. Because Me Too campaign right now it's like seeing a lot of writing on the walls on a daily basis. And my question right now in my mind is who is, be ne who is next? Who is next? Because we live in a sinful world. And during the lifetime, we had a lot of opportunities to commit sins, one sin or another. And I'm tired of listening to them saying, you know, I'm so sorry for what I've done. I, am, I was unwise. I didn't, I didn't choose the right words or the right acts. Um, not everything is true what, about what they say about me. Something is true, but not everything. You know, is this an, a repentance? Is this an apology, a real apology they make? Where is something politically correct to, you know, I'm not, I am bad, but not that bad. I am sorry, I'm not that sorry. You know, they say, I hurt my family. When did you hurt uh, your family? Now or then? In over the years? When do you uh, hurt your family? When you are discovered? When you are push, put on the spot? Or on a daily basis when you continue to do that? Friends, I didn't hear any genuine apology. I don't know. Maybe there are good people out there or out there. But as I read... I didn't hear something, I deserve to be punished. I deserve to pay for this. I, de I deserve to repay what I've done. They say, I was bad, but not that bad. I hurt my family. I am truly sorry. And uh, the writing on the wall, who is next? Do I expect my turn to be there? I'm probably, I'm not a political person. Probably I'm not a public figure, but I have a wife. I have a son. I have a mother. I have a father. I have co-workers. I have Christians that I worship with in the same church. Do I need to wait until the, the last day when they, I, someone will say, okay, what, can you interpret me? What does it mean? When my, my uh, knees will try, will start shaking, in this passage, there is no chance for this king. But friends, I have a special permission from God to tell you, for all of us, there is still a chance for us 
today. God told me through the scripture, I'm not sure about tomorrow. But for sure, today it's another day of grace. Not to cover up even more. Not to pray that lady will not say what I did. But to go back to that lady and say, I'm so sorry for what I did. To let the family members know before what I've done. It's painful. But it's better now than the la on the last day. When the, sh the knees will start shaking, there is no chance. Because the Medes and Persians are already by the gates. They are there. I don't know. God prophesied and predicted the fall of the Babylon kingdom. He said to the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar, you are the golden head, but after you will be another kingdom. The difference between God uh, um, leading things on his way and just predicting what things will happen in the future is this. Not God impressed or inspired the kingdom uh, Belshazzar to drink and to have that party that day saying, you know, if you do this, the kingdom of Babylon will be over and you will fulfill my plans. Not God inspired Judah to betray Jesus just to fulfill some prophecy in the scripture. But God oversaw things from the beginning, what will happen. And we see here a description. When there is a fall, when there is a collapse, it's not God that's involved uh, directly in that. It's me, it's my actions. He saw from the beginning what will be in the future, but I am the one that determines that event. If the prophecy can, can be fulfilled anyway, but I'm not supposed to be the one that is very active, involved in, uh, in fulfillment of that prophecy. Because some people say Judah had to play that role to fulfill the prophecy, to be the bad guy. No, Jesus uh, uh, could have died without him, his intervention. Now, the king, what I like, what the king said, in verse 29, Belshazzar gave the command and they clothed Daniel with purple, put a chain of gold around his neck. He made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. I like he was honest. He kept his promise. Even if he was over for him, he at least you know, elevated uh, Daniel in that position. When uh, Medes and Persians came, Daniel was in, on the job and also he remained after uh, that there. And we'll talk about this next time. Few uh, lessons for us before we go home today. Don't ignore the history. Don't say, I will play safe. I will sin safe. Because you never know when the writing on the wall will, be your, will have your name included there. And nobody likes that. Nobody wants that kind of experience. Solution for that is go home. Let's go home together. Let's kneel. Let's confess. Let's pray. And let's fix things. And let's think about the consequences of our uh, actions over our beloved ones, over our family members, friends, church members, co-workers, Always what we do doesn't affect just us. We affect everyone around us. That's why, friends, from this, this negative story, let's learn and say, Lord, thank you so much for your grace. You're so good to me. You gave me another chance. Please empower me. Give me that energy, that Holy Spirit that you gave to Daniel and help me to strengthen my ways up. Friends, as I, told, as I can tell you, there is no saint among us. I can confess, neither myself. That means all of us have issues in our lives. But the, the good news is, all of us has that chance today. Another lesson. Nebuchadnezzar was given one year of grace. Remember the story when he became an animal? After 12 months, God uh, uh, assigned a punishment for him. King uh, uh, Belshazzar didn't have that chance. In that very night, 
the judgment was executed. Why? I'm not sure. Ask God about that. But there are times when God says you have many opportunities and we are judged uh, related to the opportunities we had and the chances we had. And God said, if I'll give you 1,000 years, you'll be the same and even worse. If I'll give you one day, probably it's better uh, uh, for you. Um, also, another lesson from this, uh, this passage. From the history you know that during that banquet, Medes and Persians, they were already ready to attack the city. And Frank Molina will tell you more details about it, the way they uh, uh, conquered uh, the city. While they were drunk, uh, Persians, they diverted the uh, river, they went into the city, people were drunk, people in leadership were drunk, and it was very easy for them to uh, conquer the city. Sometimes we look at the enemies outside. We may see Russians are our enemies, North Koreans are our enemies, Al-Qaeda is our enemy. Uh, we can find enemies everywhere. Friends, as a nation, as a privileged nation, if we fail, it's because of us. What we do inside, not what happens outside. Because all the times in the scripture when people are in very good relationship with God, they found resources. God intervened specially in their lives and they were successful. But when they had committed themselves to sin or to be rebellious against God, no chance for them. This is a, a lesson for individuals, for families, for businesses, and for nations. We, we stay strong where we fail because of what happens inside of us. Medes, uh, Medes and Persians are always there, but they, when see we are vulnerable and we invite them, they will come and take over. And the last lesson from this passage is, the mother queen said, there is a man in your kingdom. She didn't know that many, but she knew one that has the Holy Spirit in his life. He has wisdom, he helped his, your father, and he can help you at this time. And they called and invited Daniel. Friend, are you willing to be on that list with me first? To be that man? To be that woman? To be that young man? To be that child? To be that teenager? That everyone will say, not to see, oh, they said about me, I have the Holy Spirit. But to be influential with what we say and what we do in the way we represent God. And I want this, to be attached to my name, a man of God that holds the Holy Spirit of the Lord. And when he comes, he can't breathe what's on the wall. Sometimes it's negative, but sometimes it's positive. This is my prayer. This is my wish for all of you, to leave this place, to learn from the past. Don't be like the King Nebuchadnezzar or Belshazzar, but be like Daniel. You help yourself, and you will see at the last uh, presentation from this series, you help yourself for the eternity, but mostly you'll have a spiritual influence over people around you. Go home today and start a new chapter of, li of your life and express the spiritual gifts the way people will see it, and they will glorify God, and they will ask you more questions. This is my prayer for you. Amen. Friends, this hymn was so powerful. I, I couldn't stop my tears because it was so powerful. So powerful. That's why I invite you today to think of your life and of your experience. I'm not, I don't want to put guilt on anyone to say this can be last day for you or you'll have an accident or something like that. No. But friends, why do I need to wait? Today is a day when we can totally commit, 
for the first time, or recommit our lives to God. When we do this, we are forgiven. We have the joy of salvation in our lives. And also, we don't care about what other people will say about us, right or not right. Because we strengthen our destiny with God. And we said, I confessed. I changed. I'm a different person right now. And I'm ashamed for what I've done. But that thing is solved once forever. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for reminding us that you love us. That you are in control of our lives. And also to the message from this morning, you wanted to warn us when it's not too late for us. Help us not to concentrate on what we have done or what we do at this point, but to concentrate on the bright future you prepare for us. And not just in your kingdom, but here on earth, in our relationship with others, in our relationship with our conscience, in our relationship with you. I have a special prayer today for all of us present here. To the Holy Spirit, to take control of every aspect of our existence and to give us that joy of salvation, that happiness that only you can give. And provide that wisdom that Daniel expressed when he was at that time for us to be useful for others, to touch their lives, to influence their lives, and to change their destiny. I also pray for all our family members, wherever they are at this point. I pray for all our friends, for people in our community, at work sites where we spend a lot of time. And Lord, help us today to have a new beginning. If someone today never was baptized or never committed his or her life to God, impress that person today to have the decision, what to wait? With that per if there is a person that uh, was baptized, but his or her lifestyle was like the king in chapter 5, impress that person's heart to recommit his or her life to you. She deserves a better life. She deserve, he deserves a better future. And Lord, corporately as a church, we want to be different. We want to worship you differently. We want to minister to you and to others differently. And we want to be sincere, committed, and you want to be involved. Help us and listen to our prayer. Because we pray this in Jesus' name, amen.